Because one side is working and one side is not working. So. <coughs> Welcome to the live broadcast of the opening ceremony of the World Summit on Echocardiography. This is an exciting event because not only are we bringing this World Summit to everyone in the world, we're going to bring together music, medicine, and social media in a spectacular experience. While the summit is probably of extreme interest to those in the medical field, and particularly echocardiography, who want to know what is happening around the globe, this event is also for those who want to participate in their own health through knowledge, technology, and health lifestyle. What takes place today affects the potentially and potentially benefits all of us, wherever we live. I have some guests with me that I'd like to introduce. My first guest is Dr. James D. Thomas, past president of ASE. Born and raised in Oklahoma City, Dr. Thomas attended Harvard College, graduating summa cum laude in applied mathematics and Harvard Medical School before clinical training at Massachusetts General Hospital and the University of Vermont. He's now the Charles Lorraine and Lorraine Moore Chair in Cardiovascular Imaging at the Cleveland Clinic and Professor of Medicine and Biomedical Engineering at Case Western Reserve University and serves as lead scientist for ultrasound with NASA. Clinical interests include vascular heart disease and diastolic dysfunction with research interests in cardiac mechanics, application of new echo technology, and space physiology. Dr. Thomas has over 500 peer-reviewed publications and, as mentioned earlier, is past president of the American Society of Echocardiography. He currently chairs the ASE effort in an international committee to standardize the measurement of myocardial strain by echocardiography and has previously served on the cardiovascular board of ABIM and as co-chairman for the 2007 ACC annual science sessions. Welcome, Dr. Thomas. Thanks so much, Kathy. You're making me blush. <laughs> you have quite a long list of things you've accomplished. It's amazing what you can get off a matchbook cover. <laughs> well, Dr. Thomas, heart disease is the biggest killer throughout the world, with three out of ten deaths being related to heart disease. I understand cardiac ultrasound or echocardiography is one of the most common tests a patient with heart disease undergoes for dias diagnostic evaluation. So what is the role of the Consortium of Echocardiography Societies? Of society? Thanks so much, Kathy. Well, this is a very exciting opportunity for all of us. As, as you mentioned, echocardiography is arguably the most useful uh, cardiovascular <coughs> test that we do throughout our interactions with patients. And um, uh, beginning uh, two years ago, we uh, put together a meeting to bring together the leaders of all the echocardiography societies in the world and uh, met for the first time in uh, uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina, had a wonderful meeting down there and have continued now in uh, New Delhi with a, uh, a absolutely fabulous meeting planned uh, by uh, Partho Sindupta and JC Mohan, uh, which we are just about to inaugurate right now. Wonderful. So very quickly, what is the significance of the World Summit this year? What, what do you hope to accomplish here today or for over the next three days? Well, I think the, the principal goal is uh, to provide really high-level education to about a thousand attendees in New Delhi, many of whom um, have not had the opportunity to see uh, echo education of this quality. Uh, but there's also very important goals of bringing together the leaders of the societies and giving us the opportunity to interact with each other, to get to know each other better, and to plan uh, further efforts in uh, standardizing echocardiography, in advancing the field, finding common ground, working on guidelines and standards. Uh, there's just absolutely no uh, substitute for sitting in a room with uh, someone who is your counterpart in China or Japan, or Europe, or South America, and uh, understanding that there really are many common issues that we all face, and finding an opportunity to uh, to work on common solutions. Mm -hmm. 
Well, thank you, Dr. Thomas. With me, I also have David Plans, co-founder of BioBeats in London, England. And David Plans started life as a musician, then studied artificial intelligence and computer science using algorithms to investigate the nature of human creativity. He helped build the first European merger for open source startups and has lately helped the UK's National Health Service deploy the first mobile application to let users self-report in chronic illness. At BioBeats, he designs media systems that foster wellness. He's been, he has given papers and performances at the International Computer Music Conference, the European Conference on Artificial Life, IRCAM and Darwin Symposium and the Computer Arts Society in London and is a lecturer in innovation at the University of Surrey. Welcome, David. Hi, Kathy. Thanks for having us. That's quite a diverse history, going from music to computer science, and yet somehow you've managed to bring the two together in a creative yet powerful way. Your bio at David Plans mentions that drastic life events prompted the start of BioBeats. Um, can you give me just a little bit on that? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I was running a business and um, a few, you know, quite a few years back, and um, and uh, there was a lot of stress involved because it was a very large merger, and I had a cardiac arrest at an airport, which turned out to be as a result of chronic stress, and um, I managed to survive it just. But the uh, the the attending nurse um, made sure to hand me. Um, paperwork and some advice on changing my life. So I, I decided to take what I knew of computer science and music to try and make a difference to people suffering from the same. So now today we're going to do something really exciting and it involves your app, the Plus, the Pulse app um, that people can download. And would you like to explain a little bit about the app and how we're going to be using it today, what we all can do to help? Yeah, sure. So, you know, we're trying to find ways of of studying cardiovascular disease and stress um, in an epidemiological way, so trying to gather data from millions of people. And so we wrote Pulse as an experiment on how to gather cardiovascular data from a smartphone by using the flash LED and the camera. It's a 30 megahertz camera, which means that we can't get seriously clinical data, but we can get heart rate variability from it, and that gives us a chance to study a few things. Um, Pulse, the app itself, um, makes you gather, um, I mean, makes you put your finger on the, on the flash of the, of the phone and the camera and we'll gather the data from there. And then we have a dashboard that I'll show you in a minute that gathers all heartbeats from all countries participating around the world and looks for average heart rate per country and average heart rate overall. And we'll just collect heartbeats as we go. So I happen to know that you do have a QR code that uh, some people might be able to use last minute if they haven't yet downloaded the app. For those who are listening, you can go to your iTunes store and search for the Pulse app by BioBeats, but if you'd like the shortcut, there's a QR code that may or may not scan on your phone. You can shoot the phone um, to, toward this QR code and it should take you straight there if it's able to read. Um, if not, just search your iTunes, and you can join us just a little bit later. So, what are are we supposed to do? Anything right now, or are we supposed to wait for a cue? No, you can just go ahead and start using the app whenever, uh, whenever you want, and um, and uh, and we'll keep collecting heart rate data as we go. Um, so there's no there's no no cue, no reason to wait. Just go ahead and um, start whenever you want. Now, are we supposed to be clicking on the event tab rather than the single? Yeah, th this is true. There is a, an event, um, both in the Android and the iOS version. Um, we, should, uh, we should have an event by now called WS Echo, um, the World Summit for Echocardiology. Um, if you tap on that on the event mode and get into that event, you'll see a page made for the event, and that will take you straight to... Um, to uh, uh, a page will, which will start collecting the data, um, and we should be able to go from there. Okay. Well, it looks like we're just about ready to start, so I'm going to switch on over to um, where people are getting ready to start, and we don't want to miss anything, so I'm going to put the screen there, but we can still continue to talk until we hear something. So um, those of you who are watching out there, please start your apps and go to the event tab and go ahead and take your 
heartbeat a few times and you can keep doing it throughout this event and we're going to have some interesting things here. Since we are waiting, nope, looks like we're going to have a start here. Let's wait and see. Hello everybody, welcome. Welcome to the World Summit on Echocardiography. I am Parto Gupta and with my co-chair Dr. JC Mohan, it's our distinct privilege to welcome the Consortium of Echocardiography Societies, distinguished faculty, delegates, presenters, and friends to this unique symposium. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very unique defining moment in history of healthcare. We have the face of healthcare on Google Plus, Kathy Brown. She is streaming this entire event live worldwide and uh, using the Google Plus healthcare technology and YouTube, now this is possible to, for all of us to come together on a unique front. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Partho. Hello. <laughs> and uh, we also have uh, David Plants from United Kingdom. Hi, David. Hi, Partho. So David is an entrepreneur, engineer, musician who is uh, engaged in merging healthcare with technology. And their very amazing team over the last few days has worked tirelessly to make it possible and come up with this application which is called as Pulse. If you can show the slide, my slide on the screen there. So this is a Pulse application, which is uh, available for a download on your mobile phones, and it tracks your heartbeat. And this heartbeat is then converted into music, your own personalized experience. What they have done uniquely for this event is uh, they are capturing the heartbeats of each and every person across the globe who are logged in at this moment and uh, converting that into an electronic dashboard. David, could you share your screen and show us your electronic dashboard Absolutely. so that we could uh, get a sense of uh, how it looks and uh, perhaps uh, uh, we can try to share that particular as a thumbnail. So in the in the IT, I think if you're going to Jim's computer and try to bring that electronic dashboard up, you will be able to see. So as the trends of the pulse is generated, and as we present the trends of healthcare on the scale of echocardiography, we'll see the heartbeats getting converted in real time. So this is basically heartbeats getting 
uh, added on the two screens on my right and the left on the sides, you can see the heart rates are getting aggregated. So people are driving their heartbeat. And this is a unique situation where we have the global pulse created on a global summit, which is extremely unique. So this is really at the forefront of the fusion of technology and healthcare. We would like to really thank the leaders of the First World Summit, Dr. Lang and Dr. Zamorano in the center, on the sides, Dr. Levenstein and Lorenstein and Dr. Spino. The World Summit was started with the emphasis to reach out areas of the world where teaching would make a significant impact and also have a collaboration for standardization of ECHO worldwide. With the same theme in mind and in continuity of the equations that were used two years back, we have the theme which is the global implementation of best practice opportunities and challenges in cardiovascular ultrasound. So we have an amazing three days series of illustrated uh, 90 plus state of the art lectures, over 75 abstracts, cases of art presentation, new technologies, symposia, viewpoints, discussions, social media, big data, divided into four tracks that you can choose to enrich yourself upon. And not to forget, we'll have tomorrow the game show, The Clash of the Continents. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. And at this moment, it's my real privilege and honored to welcome Dr. Mohan, who's my mentor, and whom, with whom I'm the opportunity to uh, co-chair the session, to come over and take over the proceedings for the inaugural session. Dr. Mohan. Thank you, Partho. Good morning. Physicians at large in the world, Honorable Presidents and Past Presidents of the Ecocardiography Societies of the Globe, esteemed faculty, fellow delegates, members of the Google Plus, ladies and gentlemen. What a wonderful specter it is which you are watching. This is as a result, this is as a result of untiring efforts and ingenuity of uh, my co-chair Dr. Partho Sen Gupta. American Society of Echocardiography and European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging. Without any shade of doubt, this is the most star-studded echocardiography meet in this part of the world we have ever seen. We already have more than 1,200 delegates who have registered and more are still coming. All this would not have been possible without your efforts the delegates and of course the galaxy of faculty more so because of our sponsors who have brought us to this platform so enjoy this three days of academic extravaganza enjoy delhi enjoy india i welcome you all and now we'll turn to the scene of echocardiography in the world how echocardiography is taking shape in the rest of the world and I would take this opportunity to invite Dr. Patricia Pelica, the immediate past president of the American Society of Echocardiography and director of cardiovascular ultrasound in Mayo Clinic, Rochester to tell us about the trends of echocardiography in the United States of America. Dr. Pelica, please. Thank you, Dr. Mohan. Good day, everyone. Welcome to this exciting event. Let me provide the perspective of the United States and the American Society of Echocardiography on global trends that shape the echo world. First, let me tell you a little bit about the United States. 
our population is 315 million, and our country is one of the most ethnically diverse, multicultural nations. This is a picture of some of the people who work at Mayo Clinic, and that diversity is, is evident in some of their children. The United States continues to welcome uh, immigrants as part of their um, permanent citizens. And in a given year, we have more immigrants as permanent residents accepted than all other countries in the world combined. The United States is the fourth largest country in the world by land area. And this is a picture of the Grand Canyon, which is one of the seven natural wonders of the world. It is 450 kilometers long, 29 kilometers wide, and 1,800 meters deep. But it is so colorful and so visually spectacular. 18,000 people visit it daily. What about health care in the United States? Certainly this has captured the media's attention. This slide, the yellow line, that is, depicts the growth of health insurance premiums from 1991 to 2006. And this growth has actually leveled off since 2006. But you can see that there has been a 300% increase in health insurance premiums over this time period. You can compare that to the United States Consumer Price Index, which is the uh, middle line, which is an uh, indicator of inflation. And you can see that the health insurance premiums have really galloped out of sight. The Medicare Conversion Index, which, is, which tells how much uh, Medicare pays physicians, hasn't kept up with inflation. The United States spends 18% of its gross domestic product on health care, making it the um, more, spends more money on health care than any other industrialized nation. Yet the United States system rates poorly on quality, efficiency, and access to care. Obamacare, or the Affordable Care Act, is going to improve access to care but it will continue to increase expenses. Part of our problem is the cultural expectation that care is going to be provided as long as the patient has some potential to benefit. And therefore, we often administer a lot of care in the very last month of life to an elderly patient. We also administer expensive therapies, such as robotic surgery and um, proton beam therapy and other novel technologies, even if the benefit is very small. Let me tell you now about the American Society of Echocardiography. This was founded in 1975 by Dr. Harvey Feigenbaum. Our membership is at an all-time high of 16,482 members. 2,400 of our members live outside the United States. An important mission of our society is building quality and professionalism. Our society was the founder of the National Board of Echocardiography, which administers an examination about quality and excellence in echocardiography. The ASC was also the initial sponsor of the Intersocietal Accreditation Commission, which accredits echocardiography and other laboratories and 1,301 members have achieved fellowship in the American Society of Echocardiography, which is a sign of excellence in the field. Research is also an important mission of our society, and to support that aim, we have a separate foundation that was established in 2003. The ASC, along with its foundation, has awarded more than $5 million in research grants for echocardiography research since 1996. We also, about a year ago, held this Technology and Research Summit, which established a roadmap for research involving echocardiography to 2020. 
2020. Our flagship journal is Journal of the American Society of Echocardiography, now in its 26th year of printing. It receives publications from 20, receives manuscripts from 41 countries, and the impact factor of this journal has continued to grow. This is available uh, in iPad version also. Education is another important mission of American Society of Echocardiography. This shows some of our educational products, a textbook, pocket guidelines, and continuing medical education courses. Importantly, the ASE has also been involved with the Choosing Wisely campaign, which points out to the public and physicians certain circumstances in which testing is unnecessary circumstances in which an echocardiography examination is not needed. We have also developed a free mobile app for appropriate use criteria, which defines those common critical situations in which doing echocardiography is appropriate, inappropriate, or uncertain. Let us consider the global heart disease burden. This shows a map with the age standardized ischemic heart disease incidence per uh, 100,000 men. You can see the different colors um, identifying the different extents of disease. The worldwide deaths from cardiovascular disease are 17.3 million per year now, and it's projected that by 2030 this will be. 23.6 million. We are indeed more interconnected than ever, and the importance and impact of disease and morbidity in any region impacts all of us. What can we do together? And I look forward to collaborating with you at this meeting as we work to promote quality in cardiovascular ultrasound. Let us see how we can standardize the cardiovascular ultrasound examination and disseminate this information globally. The map shows the reach of the ASE's guideline documents, which now have been translated into many different languages. These guidelines are free uh, on this website. Let us discuss how we can develop an international program for training sonographers and how this might be a benefit to different countries. And finally, let us plan our research regarding documentation of the impact of echocardiography on changing patient outcomes. And let us work together for this big mission that is important to all of us, improving healthcare worldwide. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Palika. And at this point, I would also like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Jim Thomas, James Thomas, who is there in the Google Hangout. And if we can have him up for a second. Hi, Jim. How does it look there? Hi, Partho. Yeah. Thank you, Jim, for getting this uh, exciting um, hangout going around. Well, there are some updates. I've just received at 9.13 a.m., there were 20,000 heartbeats collected, 722 heartbeats of India at an average heart rate of 83. Then there was uh, at 9.15, two minutes later, 15,000 heartbeats were collected from Japan, and average was 71 beats per minute. Interesting data that's streaming in. And you can see the data is still continuing to get collected to create the global pulse. It's my distinct privilege now to welcome Dr. Patricia Lancelotti, who's the president of the European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging. He's uh, at the uh, League Belgium, University of League. And Dr. Lancelotti will give his perspective on the trends that are shaping the world from Europe. Dr. Lancelotti.
thank you so much. Uh, uh, maybe can I have my slides? Uh, first and uh, foremost, you know, I would like to thank Professor Singupta and Professor uh, Moa uh, and the local organization for the great contribution in the success of this Second World Echo Summit. Maybe my slides would be good. Anyway, uh, a special thanks must also go to uh, all the other societies, to the faculties and to the delegates. And uh, today I feel very privileged and truly honored to represent the European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging, named, you know, EACVI. And uh, my name is uh, Patrizio Lancelotti. Maybe we have our slides coming up. Yeah, great. And uh, I'm the president of this association. But uh, finally, I will mainly focus not on the trends in Europe, but on our association. Why? Because our association is younger than the American association, of course. It's a registered branch of the European Society of Cardiology, ESC. Uh, it was created in 2003 under the name European Association of uh, Echocardiography, thanks to uh, Fausto Pinto. And progressively, we have incorporated the other imaging modalities in our association. And this has led to a rename of our association as European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging in 2012, incorporating all the different imaging modalities and uh, with the scope to promote and to have a collaborative approach, patients focus to cardiovascular imaging. And uh, now we are about to finalize the new structure of the unified EAECVI incorporating all these kind of imaging modalities and of course, the mission of the ECVI is clearly to promote excellent in clinical diagnosis, research, technical development, education in cardiovascular ultrasound, and in the other imaging modalities. So why it is important to have a unified ECVI? Not only to really have a stronger imaging association or imaging body within the ESC, the European Society of Cardiology, but clearly to design rational diagnostic pathways in which the different imaging modalities will be integrated in a cost-effective strategy for the sake of patient's health and economical sustainability. Indeed, all this uh, imaging modality will collaborate and in that way, we can maybe define and address the patient's imaging need with the ultimate goal of defining the respective value of each imaging modality according to the clinical context and in order to ensure the best use in the interest of the patient. So this is the board. We have 21 members. It's a large board. Five executive officers, ten counselor, one editor, five ex official. We have collaboration with the working group on CT, CMR, and nuclear cardiology. I'm the president, of course, but anyway, just to show you some of the photographs of some leading uh, people in the executive board, and uh, just to start with uh, Luigi Badano, the past president, that is also the chair of the International Affairs Committees. Bogdan Pepesu, our treasurer, and also the chair of uh, internal uh, industry roundtable committee, our editor in chief, Gerald Maurer, our secretary, uh, Maurizio Galderizzi, and the last but not least, my good friend, Gilbert Habib, that is the president elect of our association. Of course, the structure is complex because it is articulated around you know, a main core that is the ACVI board with several committees and finally three different sections related to ECHO, CMR, nuclear cardiology and CT. And that uh, these different committees are there to serve the missions of uh, the ECVI that is clearly to force a scientific discussion 
that is clearly also to offer uh, tangible educational programs and uh, also to help standardize, homogenize the use of cardiovascular imaging and finally to promote the appropriate use of cardiovascular imaging in Europe. And we have a large portfolio of uh, educational materials. All these uh, materials are clearly uh, linked to our web uh, with a, 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 a huge e-learning platform and we have our webinars, we have different online education like the Echo Box, but also activities has been dedicated around the certification, the accreditation, the international network around our meeting that is the EuroEcho around the research grant, the membership, and we have also some important products like uh, the compendium uh, compiling all the recommendation from our association and the joint document with the American Society of ECHO and with our ECHO textbook. Of course, all this is impossible without the membership. And uh, we have really focused on our membership and uh, we have different categories of membership. and. Uh, Two years ago was created the Club 35, which focused mainly on the young generation with exclusive benefit, advantages, to put them finally uh, forward and to, uh, to be able to promote all the young generation involved in the field of cardiovascular imaging. And you can have all this, of course, in our website. What about our main meeting, the EUROECO? EuroEco has been progressively renamed EuroEco and other imaging modalities and now has been renamed EuroEco and imaging because it should be considered as the leading meeting in non-invasive Im imaging in Europe. The scope of EuroEco has progressively evolved and changed as well. It has become not only a technique-centric meeting but clearly a patient-centric meeting where the goal is to highlight how imaging modalities may affect uh, the decision making and finally the outcome. The two main teams this year, because the next Euroeco, you know, is in Stabul, is, a, is a, in December, are uh, heart failure and imaging and interventional cardiology. And of course, during the four day uh, meeting, you will have covering more than 100 sessions, you will have several, several most uh, up to date sessions dedicated to research, advanced technique, and so on. A few words regarding our journal. The editor-in-chief of our journal is Gerald Maurer. We have 12 issues per year. Uh, our impact factor is around 2.3, more than 7,000 subscribers. Uh, and now, just maybe the very foundation of our association is the networking is always the same, is a team spirit, is a team culture. And uh, we are in liaison with uh, more than 53 European working groups of echocardiography or in cardiovascular imaging. Of course, we work all together with the sister societies and we have identified 36 national clubs, 35 ambassadors. who are really the champions in their country linking with the ESCVI. So just again to promote and enhance the young professionals. Uh, this year was launched the uh, club affiliated that is uh, dedicated to cardiovascular imaging experts, ECHO and others, of affiliated countries of the ESC with a full dedicated program, full access to our educational web platform. If I have to conclude something regarding this World ECHO Summit and the impact on ultrasound practice, I would say that today is the unique change that we have all to get together, to meet leading experts in imaging, to have a face-to-face -face contact. And all this, I'm sure, will have an impact on the improvement, reinforcement of the general knowledge of cardiac ultrasound. And of course, during this meeting, we will have uh, up-to-date sessions, most advanced echo technology discuss consensus and recommendation, and all this again will ensure the breast imaging practice in order to cover the growing needs of 
the evolving field of cardiovascular imaging. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you, Patrizio. And uh, now to tell about the echocardiography trends in Canada, I invite Dr. Lawrence Rodsky, who represents the Canadian Society of Echocardiography and is an associate professor of medicine, McGill University, and director of non-invasive cardiology, Jewish General Hospital, McGill University, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Thank you very much, and thank you to the program chairs for inviting me. Um, so this is a map of Canada. Canada is actually the second largest country in the world, uh, uh, encompassing almost 10 million square kilometers and 35 million people. So if you do a quick calculation, as I just did sitting uh, in my chair, when I look at the uh, roughly 1,800 square kilometers of Delhi with a population of 18 million, where uh, your population density is about 300,000 times as big as Canada. Um, we have uh, uh, 75,000 doctors uh, in, in Canada, and I'm, uh, I live in Montreal in, in the province of Quebec. These are the echo faces of Canada. Uh, again, you can see tremendous diversity. These are, these are the board members of the Canadian Society of Echocardiography, uh, it's, which is actually a, um, a uh, nonprofit organization registered through Canada and is a subsidiary member of the Canadian Cardiovascular Society. Um, so this is one of our great uh, national wonders. This was supposed to be a loop, uh, which I don't think is playing. No, it does not play. Um, this is Niagara Falls, uh, and uh, Niagara Falls uh, uh, illustrates why Canada understands uh, flow, which uh, we, we are involved in a lot of guidelines on, on flow and, and prosthetic valves with a strong group in Quebec City. If you look at the view from above of the Canadian side, of the Niagara Falls. Uh, it's also called the Horseshoe Falls, another example of how we're intimately involved in valvular heart disease. Notice the strong resemblance to the Cosgrove of the incomplete annuloplasty ring. And here again, we have a fusion of a couple of Canadian sites. Again, this is the Montreal's Olympic Stadium with the Calgary's Saddle Dome. So again, we have our papillary muscle, our mitral valve, saddle shaped with the cordae. So the Canadian Society of Echo, as I said, is a nonprofit organization uh, of cardiovascular professionals committed to excellence in echocardiography and promotion delivery of quality echocardiographic services of, of Canada, across Canada. Uh, we have our president, Dr. Ian Burwash, uh, our media past president, James Tam, our vice president, who is the president-elect, uh, Dr. Chiming Chow. Um, we have 30, 360 members or participants. Um, uh, there are physicians, Canadian and international, a number of international members as well. We have scientists and we have our sonographer partners. And this is our board member, uh, board of directors uh, as well. We have an annual Canadian Echo Weekend for the past 15 years. Uh, and each year uh, we invite the president of the American Society of Echo. And every year they acknowledge us and, and come and, and do a spotlight session. This past year was Patty Pelica, who gave us a talk on stress echo and ischemic heart disease. And you can see it's a quite elaborate uh, symposium. It's two and a half days and attracted 440 participants. This is our main educational activity. We also have a fantastic uh, website designed by Dr. Chiming Chow, who uh, works uh, extensively as well uh, with the ASC, creating uh, a lot of their applications. We have 20,000 hits per week, which is quite, a good, uh, quite good for a 360-member organization. Uh, on the website, we have links to other national and international societies. We have our meeting posting. We have uh, educational media, including uh, conferences that you can watch on the website uh, and, and lectures. We also have a, uh, a website listing uh, trainee uh, fellowships uh, for people who are interested in applying. And the most popular aspect of this is the CardioMath Echo Calculator, also designed by Chiming, which allows you, and explain, allows you to calculate pretty much any echo equation and explains to you how you're doing it as well. Uh, Canadian Society of Echo is involved in developing uh, guidelines. Uh, this is uh, one guideline we recently designed uh, um, for physician training and maintenance of competence in adult echocardiography. These are some other recent ones as well. We also participate, uh, some of our members, in, in writing groups of ASC guidelines and sometimes get endorsement, or we endorse the ASC guidelines as well, just as the EACVI has. Um, in terms of provision and echo uh, in Canada, there's a large uh, geographic variability. The large majority of echocardiography is provided by cardiologists, and far more frequently it's level three trained cardiologists than level two. 
Uh, in non-urban centers, uh, we occasionally have internists who have additional training in echocardiography and at a requirement of at least uh, level two, which is a minimum of six months. In most provinces, ECHOs are provided uh, are, and, and funded uh, through uh, uh, provincial health care insurance only in hospitals. Ontario, they're a little bit more liberal, if they're still politically conservative, uh, in that uh, uh, cardiologists can perform ECHOs which are reimbursed by the government uh, in private offices as well. In Quebec, where I live, almost all ECHOs are performed in hospitals uh, that can have uh, private payers outside the hospitals. Uh, in terms of sonographers, there's also regional variability. Uh, the large majority of echocardiograms are performed by sonographers during working hours. There are sonography schools, uh, and each province has their own requirements. In Quebec, all sonographers have to be trained radiology technologists or electrophysiology technologists before they can become a sonographer. And then there's, of course, additional on-site training. Uh, foreign physicians who are unable to get licensing also uh, provide uh, a, a source of, uh, of echo scanning. And sonographers also can have a professional track where they become uh, lab managers. Uh, our challenges, uh, this is what the Canadian Echo Lab used to look like uh, in the far north. Uh, but actually, it's, it's quality in the face of uh, budget cuts and non-traditional users. Uh, and our response for that is instead of throwing the towel in it, saying, let's try and improve quality to make sure that everybody gets an echo, gets an echo that's worth, uh, that's worth reading the report and, and, and making management decisions based on the report. So in Ontario, um, they've uh, tried to set more standards. As I said, pretty much anybody can do an echo there. So they've uh, created, uh, led by Tony Sanfilippo, standards for provision of echocardiography in Ontario, and they've submitted it to the Ontario government. And the other thing that, that we've done is our uh, college, uh, we've designed an area of focused competency, and we now have a diplomat in echocardiography, which is one year training in additional to or beyond the level two training. So that means 18 months of echocardiography in quite a rigorous program that will uh, teach you to become an expert echocardiographer, lab manager, and expert in quality assurance as well. Uh, Canada understands we're part of the global echo community. We have a large uh, bi-directional exchange with the United States. Uh, uh, with fellows going in both directions. We have a large number of Canadian members who are members of the American Society of ECHO. We also have bi-directional exchanges with Europe, where some of our fellows train in Europe. So we've had European fellows uh, train in Canada as well. We've had a number of different members participating in, uh, in talks and, and international meetings throughout the world. And uh, now uh, we're pleased to add India to that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ritzke. Um, wow, so let's see what's going on in the Hangout there. So some data is emerging, which is really exciting. So far we have France, South Korea, Uruguay, Spain, Venezuela, Japan, Ecuador, Greece, United States, India, Austria, Argentina, Portugal, Peru, Brazil, Chile, Croatia, France, 18 countries in all. We have reached about 50,000 uh, heartbeats uh, on the Hangout, and this was about 9.30 a.m. that the data was uh, uh, arriving. Now we have uh, the privilege to invite uh, Dr. Pedro Gutierrez Ferrajo, President of uh, Echocardiography Association of the Inter-American Society of Cardiology. He's the past president of the Mexican Society of Echocardiography uh, from Institute of Cardiovascular de uh, Guadalajara, Mexico. Dr. Ferrajo. Thank you for the presentation. to the Strong Committee for having me here this morning.
I am Pedro Gutierrez Fajardo from Mexico, current president of ECOSIAC. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you the most valuable scent of our society, the members. Here in this picture, you can see uh, members from our society together with members of the American, Europe, and Asian societies interacting in pro of the development and the growing of echocardiography worldwide. As you can see, America is a very uh, big uh, sun. And as a society, we share a lot of differences since a geographical point of view. We have a rich past history, and we also have different lands and different wonder, natural wonders. We come from parts on level C to the top of the mountains. We come from warm parts to very cool parts. But no matter where we come from, the most important thing is that we're focused in developing the eco choreography in Latin America. When we think about the story, our historical background, we cannot leave aside the Inter-American Society of Cardiology. As many of you know, the Inter-American Society of Cardiology, SIAC, for its acronym in Spanish, was created in 1944. And it has to pass a lot of time before a couple of physicians, both of them from Argentina, had in 2000 the first meeting on echocardiography organized by the Council of Echocardiography of the Argentina Society of Cardiology. I mean, Dr. Jorge Lauenstein and Dr. Guevara thought the idea of clustering the echocardiography councils of the different cardiology societies belonging to the SIAC. With that in mind, one year later, the echocardiography committee of the SIAC elected to Dr. Harry Aquatella from Venezuela, the first director of this committee. Aquatella worked for five years in this area. But in 2004, the first symposium of ECOSIAC was held in Buenos Aires. And that time, Dr. Lowenstein again, together with Dr. Bustamante and Pizarro, had the chains and had the idea to perform the Buenos Aires Act. And they wrote the first and the main objective of work and how to go to the future in echocardiography in Latin America. One year later, the second symposium of ECOSIAS was held in Lima, Peru. In 2006, the Mexican and Inter-American Congress of Cardiology was held in Cancun, Mexico. And that time, Dr. Lowenstein was elected ECOSIAC president, but still as an echocardiography committee of ECOSIAC. Taking the authorities of SIAC together with ECOSIAC and looking at the results that the echocardiography uh, were obtained, they allow us to found the Association of Echocardiography of SIAC. So we are a very young echocardiography society in Latin America. Dr. Lowenstein, was, due to the, his results, was elected the first president in the period from 2008 to 2010. And then Dr. Gustavo Estrepo from, from Colombia, then was me from Mexico, and the next president will be Dr. Rodrigo Hernandez from Chile. But no matter the person you see in this list, the most important thing we have in the, our society are our members. Many members are working directly and in the electorate together, working hard in the respective societies in pro of ECOSIAC. As every society, we have many educational activities, most of them best yet, and one of them we uh, work in local, regional, and national meetings. After the foundation of ECOSIAC, we have one yearly Congress. Those Congress have been held in Bolivia, Colombia, Mexico, Chile, Brazil, Paraguay, and the last one was in Venezuela. And I hope to see you, many of you, in Quito, Ecuador next year, and then in Buenos Aires, and then in Chile by 2016. 
Uh, I want to take advantage of this moment to express my uh, appreciation to the American and European societies for trusting us and for giving the chance to participate and to learn from them and collaborate with them in several events. In a couple of months, you will have in your hands the first ECOSIAC Echocardiography and Cardiovascular Imaging Book that has been a great effort from Dr. Gustavo Estropo that he has been uh, led this book. He has been working hard to put together all of the chapters and I hope in a couple of months it will be ready. Also, Dr. Estropo, the past president of ECOSIAC, has worked hard in the guidelines of ECOSIAC. These guidelines were published in most of the Latin American journals on ECHO training and on ECHO lab accreditation. We have a program of internship uh, with our members. When a member wants to learn something special about the new techniques, uh, they can recruit to ECOSIAC and we can get a place to spend that internship. This is one of our peers, the website. If you access to the website, you will find clinical cases, challenges cases, new workshop groups, guidelines, websites, links, forums, and so forth. As a young and all the new board society, we front a lot of challenges and priority. But most important is our legal personality is in process. We are in the process of obtaining our notarized certificate. And, uh, uh, the Foreign Affairs and Financial Authority has approved that we can use the name ECOSIAC and we can join together to conform this society. It could be simple, but due to the different regulation between countries, this has been a little delayed, but we are almost in the final step. Of course, financial resources in order to guarantee self-sustainable association is our primary uh, priority keep interacting with ECON Cardiovascular Imaging Society, also with the American, with the European, and still means the rest of the echocardiographers worldwide to work together. Just focus in creating the basis for a long-lasting relationship based on a win-to-win philosophy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the uh, current board of uh, executive board of the ECOSIAC and you can access to our website and you can see the wide distribution and how our members are working very hard and together. Thank you for your attention. Land of Rising Sun, and uh, it's my proud privilege to invite Dr. Yutaka Osuzi, Executive Member, Japanese Society of Echocardiography, Editor in Chief, Journal of Echocardiography, Professor of Medicine, Second Department, Internal Medicine, <laughs> University of Occupational and Environmental Health, Kika, Kita Kyushu, University, Japan. Thank you very much, Dr. Mo, and to, uh, for the kind introduction. Um, I came from uh, Japanese Society of Echocardiography uh, in Japan. 120 million people are living. Uh, uh, these are Mount Fuji and these are recent Tokyo Sky Tree. And uh, our society was established in 1989. And the 
first president was uh, Dr. Junichi Yoshikawa. I guess some, okay, okay, thank you. Some of you may know him. And the second one is uh, Dr. Kunio Miyatake here. And Dr. Beppu, Dr. Yoshida, and current president is uh, Dr. Takenaka. And we have members. The number of members are increasing from the initial 1989 uh, steadily, uh, you know, uh, and the total number is a little bit more than 5,000. And a little bit more than a half is sonographers. And the, and the remaining is physicians. Both are increasing steadily. Uh, we have, uh, we recognize importance of education. So we do multiple courses, educational courses. Uh, the oldest one is called as Echo Kobe from 1992, uh, with uh, 550 attendees annually. In the winter one, it is the largest one with more than 700 attendees. Uh, from 2003, uh, we started Echo Course in Tokyo with 500 attendees, and uh, this Echo Course in Tokyo was held in Tohoku uh, two years ago uh, because of the uh, earthquake. And from this year, uh, we will start echo course for structural heart disease. Uh, the attendees are limited to uh, 150. We have publications. The name of the journal is uh, Journal of Echocardiography from 2003. It is a peer-reviewed journal, online editorial process, and the founding editor-in-chief was Dr. Kiyoshi Yoshida, and the current one is myself. Uh, we publish review article, original investigation, case report, images, and cardiovascular ultrasound. So please send us many papers from you. And we also support research. Uh, we do a overseas research fellowship from 1998 and uh, distinguished abstract award for overseas congress from 1999. And uh, this year, we started research encouragement award on gender diversity and uh, for the Journal of Echocardiography based manuscript award is from 2008, 2008, and the, the latest uh, winner uh, is Dr. Chisato Izumi. Uh, uh, we recognize importance of international cooperation. Uh, we started cooperation with American Society of Echo from 2005. Uh, we also do international cooperation with European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging and Korean Society of Echocardiography. Uh, we send YIA winners each other. We uh, invite faculties each other and, uh, and uh, this kind of international uh, stimulation communication is uh, very important for the development of the society. Um, the Japanese Society of Echocardiography, our goal is to offer better patient care through echocardiographic practice, education, and research. As an, uh, uh, in Japan, we, I think we have multiple epoch-making events like this painting uh, maybe 200 years ago, and uh, Tokyo Olympic took place in 1946. We will have Tokyo Olympic again in 2020. In between, I believe the epoch-making event in Japan was 
establishment of Japanese Society of Echocardiography. Thank you very much for the attention. All right, so let's see what's happening on the scoreboard there. It looks like there are 11,000 uh, plus uh, heartbeats getting in. It just keep, keeps on getting increasing. So as you see uh, there um, on the, you know, you have all these countries that are, uh, people are like logging in and they're contributing their vote, you would say, or your heartbeats as they're logging in. And you continuously see this uh, global map uh, becoming more and more uh, popular. All right, so now we have this uh, opportunity to um, welcome Dr. Kawahi Kim, Director of International Affairs Committee, Korean Society of Echocardiography. He's the Director of Echocardiography Lab at the Heart Center of the Chunam National University Hospital, Republic of Korea. Dr. Kim. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure to be here. And I'd like to introduce our society. Uh, here is Korea. Uh, it's located in the south east part of the Asia. And this is the map of my country. It looks resembles the tiger. So we want to be a strong country. <laughs> and this season the autumn the beautiful scenery is usually meet in the mountain. The beautiful colors of the leaves you can see when you come to Korea. Uh, let me introduce my society. Uh, in 1968, uh, the echocardiogram promotion was first introduced in Korea. After then, some of the physicians researched the, in the field of echocardiography. And we hosted a Pulse Asian Pacific Congress on the plan echocardiography in 1991. After then, after the successful hosting of the APCDE, the institute aimed to establish Korean Society of Echocardiography was finally put the ground and the foundation of KSE was achieved in 1993, February. After then, two months later, the first uh, annual meeting of the Echo Society was held in April in 1993. After that, KSE provides opportunities to cardiologists, also as well as internists and physicians to improve knowledge in the field of cardiovascular images and more important patient care. This is became our goal of the society. At present, in our society, have the lots of executives and board of directors and consulting communities. And the member is around 2300 of people's uh, position. Uh, this is the, our society committees. And the uh, current president is Sangijo, and the current uh, executive board director is Jun Kwan. And we hosted uh, many international scientific meetings. In 2001, we hosted PIPS World Congress of Echocardiography and Vascular Ultrasound. And 2004, we hosted International Congress on Doppler Society. And 2006, we hosted 11th Congress of World Federation for Ultrasound in Medicine. And also, two years ago, we hosted 15th APCD meeting in Korea. And recently, we also 
many collaborations with other international societies. From 2010, we have a readers' meeting with ASC and also EACBI. The last year, I have met Dr. Ancelotti at the leadership meeting. And in the previous speaker already mentioned, Korean Society of Echocardiography and the Japanese Society of Echocardiography have, uh, each had the joint session at the scientific meeting. And we, this uh, November, we will have a 13 pipes annual meeting. And at that time, we have a lot of uh, joint sessions with ASC and also American Asian Pacific Association of Echocardiography and also JSE. And we also published the official textbook of echocardiography. This is the first one 10 years ago. This is the second edition five years ago. And this year, we will publish third edition. And also, this is, is the, our official journal. Journal of Cardiovascular Ultrasound is a peer-reviewed journal for international approach. And if you visit the website, you can proceed the e-submissions. Please send your valuable researches to our journal. And also, we publish uh, echocardiography newsletter four times in a year. And this is the, our official website, and www.kseco.org. If you visit here, you can see every kinds of uh, information regarding our society. And this is the last slide of my presentation. Uh, we have a uh, certain PIPs annual science meeting. And also, this year is our 20th anniversary of the foundation of the society. Uh, please congratulate our society. Thank you for your attention. We turn to China, and uh, I invite Professor Yun Zhang, President of the Chinese Society of Echocardiography, Professor of Medicine, Chairman of the Department of Cardiology, Dean of Shandong University School of Medicine, Vice President of Shandong University, Shandong University, Kilu Hospital, Shandong, China. Professor John, please. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, first of all, I would like, uh, on behalf of Chinese Society, Echocardiography, uh, thank you the organizing committee to invite us to attend this uh, wonderful meeting. In the next eight minutes, I would like to share with you current status of ECHO in China. Uh, this is my disclosure. Uh, you know, Chinese uh, is the largest population uh, in the world. We have uh, 1,300 million people in China. Uh, among them, Han uh, population is the largest, but still we have 56 nationalities in China. All the people like uh, 56 flowers uh, from a big family of Chinese. Uh, as you know, everybody knows, I think uh, the uh, most important natural wonder in China is the Great Wall. Uh, which uh, is uh, really unique in, in the world, but you look at, if you look from from far, you can see this is going to look like uh, our corner arteries. And the, uh, the Times Square is the logo of China, of course, uh, which uh, references the political center in this country. And also we. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, we have um, several uh, societies in China uh, of ultrasound. Uh, the largest is the Chinese Society of Ultrasound Medicine, which was founded in uh, 1987. And ECHO is only a branch of that society. 
Uh, but two years ago, we decided to establish our own society called Chinese Society of Echocardiography, CSE. I'm the current president of this uh, society, and also we have seven uh, vice presidents. The number is now only uh, nearly 700. This is a logo of Chinese Society of Echocardiography, which is still quite young. Uh, we have several issues in China. We have different systems uh, from the Western world. Uh, in China, Echo is a part of the Department of Ultrasound Medicine in most, in most large hospitals. And the Chinese cardiologists received very little training in Echo. And Echo experts have very little training also in cardiology. So it's a big problem in China. Now we have changed this situation. Uh, Echo has become a part of the Department of Cardiology uh, in 75 university hospitals already in China. And uh, we have decided to train Chinese cardiology fellows uh, uh, with the echo cardiography, they have to receive systemic training echo. And similarly, Chinese echo physicians, it's different from the Western world. Uh, this is doctors who are doing echo not sonography in China. Many physicians have to receive uh, systemic training in cardiology as well. So the goals of our society uh, are threefold. Uh, first is the number one is the popularization of echo uh, techniques and knowledges in Chinese cardiologists. And number two, establishment of uh, high standard echo laboratories and teams. Number three, promotion of clinical orientation, standardization, and the internationalization of echo cardiology in our country. Uh, so what have we done in the last two years? Well, we have performed the national echo registry. We try to clarify these data, uh, how large is the lab space, um, how many staff we have in each lab, uh, what kind of instrument we are using, uh, study volume per day, uh, education programs, research grants, and the echo techniques actually applied. So uh, we have uh, several education programs. We have published the training textbook of echocardiography specialized for uh, Chinese cardiologists. We have uh, uh, organized a number of echo seminars and courses in the major cities of China, mainly focusing on ASA guidelines. This is uh, the first uh, uh, echo training textbook for clinical cardiologists uh, published in Chinese uh, just last year. And this is uh, uh, to standardize echo uh, studies in China. We uh, uh, have done a lot of work, uh, put a lot of efforts to translate ASE guidelines into Chinese uh, and the permission of ASE. And this is the ASE website showing the, the translation work in progress. And here's the uh, guidelines we have translated already. We have done, we have translated about uh, 10 uh, ASC guidelines. And here again is the ASC guidelines translated into Chinese. Uh, at the same time, we are preparing our own uh, echo guidelines, including guidelines for cardiac chamber measurement, guidelines for bedside echo studies, and also guidelines for credentials, uh, credentials examinations of echo for cardiologists and sonographs in China. And here is uh, the website of Chinese Society Echocardiography. Uh, here you can see this is my uh, beautiful picture. And uh, here again, uh, we published a number of articles in newspapers and also our website to, to, uh, to, to show to the cardiologists why, why important is echo and how to combine echo and clinical uh, practice uh, and also with uh, uh, interventions. Uh, in doing this, we found a big issue in China is that we are lacking our uh, a a set of uh, a normal reference value in Chinese adults. And so we, uh, we decided, our society has decided to, to conduct a very large study called the Enninka study, uh, which uh, is a nationwide multi-center studies involving all provinces of China and also more than 1,400 normal Chinese adults. We have uh, finished this study, and this, uh, this uh, we checked this. This is the first study, uh, largest study in the normal value of normal values of echo in the world, and this is paper is just a review in European hydrogen. Uh, also, we have put a lot of efforts in international collaborations. Uh, yeah, this is uh, uh, the photograph uh, the leadership uh, of the ASC and also CSE uh, last year, and we also uh, as a I was invited the international faculty members of ASE to chair a, a chair session, a few lectures uh, in the last few years. 
And uh, we also joined the Asian Pacific Congress of ECHO uh, in, in, in the last two years. This is a, a, the, the Congress here in Japan. Uh, uh, I was invited to, to give a lecture. And here again, also, uh, as um, our co colleague, colleague mentioned, uh, we also established a new society called Asian Pacific Association of Echocardiography. Professor J.O. Uh, in, um, uh, in Mayo Clinic is the current president and I, I am elected as vice president. And this society was founded by uh, Japan, Korea, and China. And uh, this is a uh, AAKC joint session uh, last year in Seoul. I was invited uh, to be uh, on behalf of Chinese society at Cardiology to give a lecture. The second of your summit, I think, uh, in India is a historical meeting, uh, which is very important. Again, uh, you find that the Chinese society at Cardiology is uh, one of the collaborating, collaborating societies. Uh, well, for the future international echoes meeting in China, we are going to have the first uh, academic meeting of AAE in December 6 to 8 uh, in Beijing. And also the next one, third World Summit of Echo, will be uh, held in Beijing September uh, 11 to 13, uh, 2015. All of you are welcome to these very important meetings. This is uh, our uh, website of AAE and here again uh, is a very interesting meeting. I hope everybody uh, of you will join our meeting in the two months to come. Thank you very much for your attention. This is the last day I will say this is Jiu Jai Go, the most beautiful scenery in China. Welcome to that also. Thank you, Dr. Jiang. So the latest update is we have 24 countries who have joined, Belgium, UK, China, North Korea, Suriname, Guyana joined recently. There are over 130,000 beats, and I think now it's crossed the board, close to 150,000 beats that are being recorded. Wow. So it's my distinct pleasure now to invite Dr. Uh, Ravi R. Kaslewal, who's the president of the Indian Academy of Echocardiography, chairman clinical and preventive cardiology at Medanta Heart Institute, Medanta the Medicity, and Medanta has been really helpful uh, to the ASC for carrying out some of the humanitarian missions, and particularly Dr. Kastlewal has helped us in some of those missions. Dr. Kastlewal, thank you so much. Thank you. Dr. Parthasan Gupta, Dr. Jigdish Mohan, global leaders of echocardiography, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, uh, it's a privilege of the Indian Academy of Echocardiography to be associated with this uh, global summit of echocardiography. Can you just? Yeah. Okay. 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 We got it. Thank you. <laughs> India is a country of uh, huge, huge ethnic uh, diversity, a civilization which is 5,000 years old. Uh, the ethnic diversity and the unity is just seem to be believed. But closer home, 250 kilometers from where we s stand today and speak in the Millennium City, uh, is one of the wonders of India uh, called the Palace of Winds of the Hawa Mahal, which was established in 1799. In, in the pink city of Jaipur. So between polo palaces, the pink city is a privilege to be there. And it's one of the wonders of, but the, the person who made this building, which has 50 feet high, you can sit anywhere in this, in this uh, building and you will not feel hot at all, even 45 degrees outside. He never realized, so while Pratap Singh, 1799, never realized the 300 years from there, India will be staring at a killer epidemic, as is all over the world, cardiovascular disease, metabolic syndrome, we are the diabetes capital of the world, so we are staring at an epidemic of cardiovascular disease. So the challenges before us, among, that we are amongst the countries with a very high burden of coronary artery disease, diabetes mellitus, metabolic syndrome, we continue to have rheumatic heart disease in great proportions and other infectious diseases. There is a lack of awareness to a large extent, but it's getting better. There is lack of easy accessibility uh, to healthcare. And of course, there's a lack of affordability and 
adequate train power, train manpower is difficult to get through. With these in mind, the Indian Academy of Echocardiography was started in 1994. The founder president, Dr. Savitri Srivastava, and the founder secretary, Dr. S. K. Parashar, laid the foundation of this academy on a very solid ground. They said integrity, scientific transparency, and to take this knowledge forward to as many places as, po as possible. And I'm privileged that Dr. Parasha is right here in this meeting. The current membership stands at 1,500. We aim to take it far higher uh, in this year, in the coming years. People are beginning to realize the importance of echocardiography, slowly but very steadily. And we already have five regional um, branches. We should have had many more, but at least people are realizing that in a vast country, they need to have their own pockets where they can talk, discuss, and then talk to the main center. The, the academic activities are multifold. Echo India is our annual conference of the Indian Academy of Echocardiography, which, which was held last month, uh, the yearly meeting, and it attracted almost uh, 1,100 or 1,000 delegates. The next meeting is going to be in an exotic place, Goa, next year, and you're all invited to that. Apart from the place being exotic, the meeting will have scientific content, which will be amazing. We continue to have regional meetings. Uh, we continue to bring out the Journal of the Indian Academy of Echocardiography. And Dr. Rakesh Gupta and Dr. Samir Shivas have done a lot of hard work on that. Accreditation of echo practitioners, level one and two, is also there. And there is, and we have started the fellowship of Indian Academy of Echocardiography. As, as the first segment of the society with a, with a very prominent executive committee, our vision of the future is that we would like to spread awareness about the value of echocardiography and to incentivize younger individuals. We want to uh, exploit the, the education, educational background and employ people, engage people, young people particularly, in research. We want to standardize our echo practices, which is a must across the globe. People have, everybody, all the presidents have talked about standardization. And that truly is the most important thing, standardization of echo practices, organizational strengthening, and prediction and prevention. The last P has truly been my, my, uh, my vision that if we could pick up preclinical atherosclerosis, uh, truly in this country, with every 10th person having the possibility of having coronary artery disease, we could have done a human service as an organization. What do we look forward from other uh, echo societies and the global leaders are right here? We would like to engage with them in finding out cost-effective solutions to healthcare delivery. I'm sure this is an issue with all the countries. Collaborative teaching sessions and workshops, and particularly these are important because the, the young minds their, their minds are opened when they come across same situations elsewhere in the world. Exchange programs and particularly research collaborations because I feel that Indians are now all over the globe and we, they would, people would like to know the Indian diseases. So disease specific data, we are already working on normative data and hopefully by the next meeting we will have some normative data from our organization. And we are also working on regional, region-specific guidelines. So this is our, our vision. This is our, it's a very robust organization with young individuals who are just raring to go. And hopefully, we will have a, a, a colloquium of people who will take echo to that extent. And this is the place where I work. And this is the tree of life. The, Attendance of the people, sick people who are admitted here will tie a red band onto the tree of life. And the receptacle which is at the base says Harjan Allah, which means every life is priceless. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Kasarwal. So I'm going to bring back my slides. But in the meanwhile, I just have the microphone to Dr. Thomas there. Jim, uh, if you can get the microphone there. Uh. Microphone?
and we will just like to take his comments. And meanwhile, we'll see on the screen here, the tracking is continuing, the pulse beats are increasing, um, and um, do you have a cordless mic there? Not yet. Give a cordless mic to him. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, very good. And Kathy, can you hear me? I hope so. Good. Yes, All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Partho. This has been a marvelous um, mute here, so it's just one one of me coming across. Uh, this has really been a marvelous tour around the world of uh, the state of play in the echocardiography field. I really uh, am grateful to all the uh, presidents and past presidents of the societies for uh, providing their insight and for showing how much universality there is in the issues facing echocardiography and quality improvement, standardization, education, training, all of these issues that we'll be addressing over the next three days. So uh, congratulations to you and congratulations to all the uh, societies that are here for this important uh, meeting for our field. Thank you, Jim. So now we're going to go ahead with the um, traditional um, lighting of the lamp, which is uh, going to commence the inaugural uh, function uh, of the meeting. And uh, while we were in the process of trying to choose some soundtrack, we were alerted by the Google and the YouTube that you, know, you just cannot use any soundtrack because there will be copyright issues. So we were in a fix. So we decided that we'll create our own soundtrack. And uh, what we decided that we create uh, music from Echo Data. This is called as data sonification. Uh, it's the transformation of data into acoustic signal, which has been extensively being used uh, in different disciplines. And what you're going to hear as the lamps are lit is going to be the music that is actually going to emerge from the Echo Data. So we have uh, the Excel spreadsheet here, and this is all the heart mechanics data. And all this data has been put together, uh, and the idea is to see the tune and how melody of the heartbeat sounds. Uh, this was something which we got inspired with what uh, David uh, is trying to do. And for, for put, uh, this particular uh, music track, uh, I collaborated with Marty Quinn, who's a uh, so now, uh, who's a data certification researcher, and uh, he's worked with NASA, and he's uh, going to provide this music for this background. In the meanwhile, may I request all the representatives from the societies to please come forward, and we can have the gathering in the front so that we'll have the traditional lighting of the lamp started. And I'm going to just get started with the music. So this is the data that is going to play. Each tune is going to be repeated. So each tune is in a melody. It's going to be repeated over a cardiac cycle. And mechanical parameters are going to be added. And you're going to see the tunes increasing and improvising over time.
So with that, we declare the World Summit of Echocardiography, the second World Summit of Echocardiography open. And I'm going to have uh, the microphone to Dr. Rohan for further comments. Thank you. We would, uh, I think we'll split in the different halls after a tea break. That's what we are going to do. Have a tea break and then we split and uh, start the uh, scientific sessions. Enjoy the sessions. Thank you. Okay, so it looks like we're done with the conference and the summit is wrapping up for tea. Jim, are you able to hear me? Yes, I am, Kathy. And David, are you still with us? Yes, I'm here. Would you like to come jump with your face and uh, we'll talk a little bit here. I'll, I'll bounce between the few of you. Um, first, I want to talk with Jim for just a minute now. We've, we've seen the opening ceremonies. We've gotten a nice update from all of the different countries. And um, one of the things that was consistent in all the messages was standardizations are important. Can you uh, tell us what, what we're doing to pull all that together in a united effort? Um, sure, uh, Kathy, there's a little bit of interference in the room here, but I'll do my best to uh, talk over it. Um, as, as we mentioned before, echocardiography is, is the most readily available imaging test uh, worldwide. Um, but it, it really needs to be used uh, in, in the most complete and professional fashion to provide maximal value. Um, to do a poor echo is really to do a disservice to our patients. And so um, what we have tried to do is to uh, have both uh, technical standardization as to exactly how we quantify the leakiness of a valve or how tight a valve is, how the ventricle is functioning, and also to make sort of uh, programmatic rep uh, recommendations as to how echocardiogram should be done um, and uh, what sort of training a person should have before they are considered qualified uh, to undertake uh, echocardiography. Um, and uh, uh, all the societies are working together on these. We've had a number of collaborations between American Society of Echo and the European Association uh, we've also invited in our Japanese, Korean, and Canadian colleagues on a number of standards. And now we've undertaken a major project to translate um, many of our major guidelines into Mandarin, into Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, French, uh, so that these can really be disseminated out to the people in the field that most need them. One last question, then I'll let you get to tea while I talk with David. But um, I wanted to ask you about the humanitarian missions that have taken place in the past, because um, what I understand is some of that was training people in those standards of of um, care and, and what you're what you're trying to do with the standards. And can you tell us a little bit about what you've done? Yes, uh, I sure can. And this really is uh, has been the brainchild of Hartho uh, Singupta, who you saw so much this morning. Uh, the initial uh, uh, I think uh, Partho has been doing this on a smaller scale for several years, but our first really uh, mass uh, um, experience with, with this was uh, two years ago this coming January uh, when American Society of Echo uh, sent, uh, I believe it was nine sonographers and two or three physicians uh, to the city of Sursa um, in northwest India. Uh, and there, um, in a uh, very large meditation camp that was being organized, uh, we identified over a thousand patients who needed to have echocardiography. These were patients, uh, subjects who had heart disease, who had symptoms, um, and so we uh, we scanned their hearts, had their uh, their echo information digitized and uploaded into the cloud, um, and uh, uh, while uh, uh, up there we had arranged to have about 100 physicians from all over the world access to those uh, so that they could be read uh, very rapidly. Issues, uh, uh, reports were issued, uh, and within about 12 hours, we could get reports back to the uh, representatives in the, uh, the camp in Sursa to identify those patients that needed further diagnosis and treatment. Uh, I happened to be at um, at uh, Echo Hawaii at the time, I was chairing that meeting there, so uh, I had the uh, 
the sad task of having to uh, read my uh, share of the echocardiograms from India uh, while in Hawaii, uh, but it was very effective. Uh, we uh, read over a thousand echoes uh, in just a day or two and uh, really provided the first high-level diagnostic uh, information to many of these patients there. Uh, we followed that up uh, about a year ago with a second mission that, as you said, went beyond just doing the echoes, but teaching many of the people uh, on the ground here in the hospitals how to properly do echoes. So it's more of a uh, teach uh, and, uh, you know, teach a man to fish so that they can eat for a lifetime than simply uh, uh, bringing the meal to them as we did in the first camp. I hope that's clear. That was very nice. Thank you. I want to thank you for participating in today's Hangout. And I'll let you get to your tea. And I'm going to talk with David here um, and find out what his impression of what happened on the social aspect of the app and all. So I'm going to mute your mic so um, we can um, have some less background noise there. And I'm going to call on David. So um, David now, are you able to hear me? Hi there. Yes, I can hear you, Kathy. Well, now, I know a lot of people are curious about this app, and they're, if they haven't already downloaded it, they're going to want to. So would you please turn up your um, information on how to get a hold of you um, so they can, they can contact you? Yeah, right? absolutely. Let me turn you up just a little bit here. I think I have you turned down. Okay? Can you hear me okay? Yes, just fine. So what were your impressions? You got to see all this data happening. You, you had the front row seat, and I know that you were sharing that information directly with Partho, and, and I was waiting for every update with everyone else. Tell us what your impression was of the data that you watched happen. Yeah, so it's really interesting because um, I was able to um, look at the data, and, and I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like to me because it could be interesting to see. Um, I don't know if you're recording this, but Arthur might like to see this. Um, the idea is that, you know, from from this screen, you guys could see heartbeats um, being collected from different countries. Um, we had initially um, loads of heartbeats from India, Japan, um, and then suddenly uh, South Korea, Uruguay, Spain, Venezuela, Japan again, Ecuador, Greece, the United States, India, Austria, Argentina, and so on. There was about 18 countries to begin with. Then when we crossed over about 50,000 heartbeats in all, um, Belgium, the UK, China, North Korea, Suriname, and Guyana joined. and um, we went, well, we've just now gone over 200,000 heartbeats. But the, um, uh, the other view of what it looks like is um, this, which is, which, is just the, um, which is just the data as it comes into our database. And from that, we can get coordinates, which meant that as I was looking at the data, I, um, I, uh, I started to look at where, where they came from exactly. So there was people from all over, you know, uh, in several medical centers all over the world, I imagine, either watching or um, reading the feeds or something. But it was, yeah, it was extremely interesting to see. Wonderful. Well, I know I had fun. I wanted to participate in the app, but I was afraid that the music would play when I was in the <laughs> Hangout, so I turned it on once and heard music and had to turn it off, so I got to participate just one small fragment that I hope got logged in time. So, um, Can you tell me, um, what are the plans for the, the Android app? I know that we, we were able, to, some people were able to get it. It is in beta, but in order to have the active link work, you had to join the community on Google Plus called, let me see, World Summit Global Heartbeat. And by doing that, then you would be on a list that would clear you to get that link, have that link work properly? Uh, no, the link is on that page directly. I mean, that, that group on Google Plus is, um, is completely open. It's a public beta that we opened just for the summit. So we'll leave it open during the summit, and uh, and that link doesn't require you to join anything else than just that group. So as long as you're in that group, you have a link on that page. And the Android link 
is is on that page is on the sidebar. Well, I, there was something about having to join the the community. You couldn't just grab the link because um, even sharing that link outside of the community, it didn't seem to work right. Uh huh. Okay. Well, we'll investigate that. But there's um. I mean, it's a it's kind of a Google requirement that um that in order to for us to be able to distribute stuff from Google Play the store. Um, there has to be um, a tie-in to a group to 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 basically Google Plus, um, but beca because the app isn't public yet, you see. Mm -hmm. Now, have you have you filled all your slots for the heavy-duty beta testers, or are you still looking for the ones that can go into the top secret beta room mm -hmm. that you do have to get access yeah, to? Yeah, we we the more the better, really, because Android has more than a thousand different devices out there in the wild, you know. And so it's very hard to it's very hard to profile all of them so it will work for everybody. And partly our aim is to drive epidemiology forward, you know, like how to look at cardiovascular disease in a truly global way. And that means uh, you know uh, lots and lots and lots of Android phones. So yes, we're still looking for people. So if anybody wants to be a beta tester of the Android or the uh, future iPhone apps, they can reach you at the, let me put it back onto your screen, um, on the contacts that you have on your screen. And also, especially on Google+, Plus, BioBeats has their own page mm -hmm. that they can reach out that way. And BioBeats has a website. You want to switch to the BioBeats um, screen share that you have so that we can see that and that is specific to BioBeats if anybody wants to follow on Twitter, on Google Plus, wants to go to the website um, wonderful and um, also another thing that uh, might be interesting is if there's anyone out there that has some additional technology and is brainstorming on some interesting ways that they can merge your music and science with something that they have who knows what you could come up with that could really rock the world for the next World Summit, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think um, it, um, with more time and a bit of um, uh, you know uh, work with Partha, we could come up with something really, really nice. Great. Well, we're going to wrap it up here for now. So um, I want to thank everyone who's watching. I am going to give you my own follow information. So if you're interested in social media, especially in healthcare, or you would just like to reach out to me and talk, um, these are my contact information and I'm going to sign off for now and thank you all who donated your heartbeats for tonight and thank you David Plans for being a part of this You're and welcome. good night and I don't know what the other languages are so I won't even pretend <laughs> <laughs>